Upscaling tech has become incredibly common to find in games, so much so that all three GPU manufacturers offer their own solutions to do just that. Generally speaking, Nvidia is the front runner here, with their closed source proprietary option called DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's in its third generation, with the big new feature being frame generation. I won't bore you with the intricate details, but in short, it basically looks at the last frame, the next frame, and then creates an intermediary frame to quite literally double your frame rate. The catch to this is that it has to know what the next frame looks like, which means that it has to hold back that new frame, draw its intermediary frame, render that to the screen, and then let the new frame actually go out. That adds latency, and that's what I wanted to test here. Now, AMD does have their own upscaling tech called FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is an open source uh, alternative and works on any GPU, including the RTX 4090 that I'm testing on here. It doesn't use any type of AI magic, which helps make it more accessible at the cost of some quality in certain scenarios. Intel 2 now offers XESS, or Z Super Sampling, which does use a neural network, but it is also open source. Now before jumping into the results, I should explain why I don't have any results for DLSS frame generation in Cyberpunk 2077. I'll just show you the clip, I think you'll understand. Basically, with frame generation enabled, the game becomes unplayable. It seemed to render frames in small batches, and then halt, and then render another batch. The whole game engine seemed to lock up too, as inputs were completely missed. If it's not obvious, that meant that I couldn't get it to register any inputs, and therefore I couldn't measure how long those inputs take to show something up on screen. I don't know if this is a problem with, you know, isolated to my test system. I did reinstall both the game and the latest GeForce drivers and neither fixed the problem, so I'm not sure. But for the results that I could get with Cyberpunk, how do they fare? Well, at stock, with no upscaling tech running at all, on my test system using this Gigabyte M32Q at 165Hz, LDAT reported 35.76 milliseconds of total system latency. Sticking DLSS on auto drops that down to 26.14 milliseconds. DLSS on the ultra performance mode drops it further to 24.65 milliseconds. AMD's FSR on auto pretty much matches DLSS on auto with a ever so slightly higher 26.7 milliseconds. But interestingly, with FSR on the ultra performance mode, the latency actually increased to 30.38 milliseconds. Now that is still 5 milliseconds faster than no upscaling tech at all, and for what it's worth I am using an Nvidia card, but still those results might not quite be what you expected to see. I mean the whole point of this upscaling tech is to take a lower resolution frame and then upscale it once it's finished rendering. That sounds an awful lot like adding latency, and it is. But the key point here is that the stock frame at the full resolution ends up taking longer to render than the lower resolution frame that just gets upscaled. So that's Cyberpunk, but what about a game that includes all three technologies, including working frame generation? Well, look no further than Hitman 3. This one was a bit of a challenge to measure latency on. I ended up having to use my old methodology of a 1000 FPS camera and a mouse with a, an LED soldered to the left click switch, but I kept a consistent measurement pattern and used the entire clip in the silver baller, so how did they perform? Well, rather interestingly, all except DLSS frame generation offered lower than stock latency. Some were more impressive than others for sure though. FSR on the quality mode actually offered the best latency by far at just 45 milliseconds, down from 60 milliseconds without any upscaling or at stock settings. That is a sizable improvement. 
albeit for a game that isn't exactly a Twitch shooter. Intel's XCSS, which they do explicitly list as better on Intel GPUs, is the worst performing here in the upscaling alone category, with the ultra quality mode, which is the same as quality on both FSR and DLSS, only dropping the average latency by three milliseconds. And the most performant mode, performance, only drops that by another one millisecond. Compare that to DLSS, which on quality ran 2.5 milliseconds faster than XCSS performance, or DLSS Ultra, uh, or Ultra performance, which is a further two milliseconds faster than that. Well, you can see DLSS is a little bit better here. Interestingly, again, FSR's Ultra Performance Mode actually increased the latency compared to its quality preset. I mean, still well below stock, XCSS, and even DLSS quality modes, but considerably smaller than FSR quality. But the real interesting one, for me anyway, is DLSS Ultra Performance with frame generation enabled. This was a lot closer to stock than I was expecting. It only took two milliseconds longer on average. Admittedly, that is still 10 or so milliseconds slower than running just DLSS Ultra Performance on its own. But to go from around 100 FPS at stock to over 200 FPS with it enabled, it certainly offers a, um, a smoother visual experience and for relatively little latency difference. There is one major catch to frame generation beyond the immediate latency disadvantage, which is that it's not input aware. As in, if you were to click your mouse to shoot, the generated frames won't know that you've clicked the mouse because they don't come from the game engine itself, the one handling those inputs. They're just interpolated frames between the last hill frame and the next one. That does mean the latency is like to be likely to be higher and can be made worse depending on how games handle or game engines handle their inputs. It's a far from perfect solution for sure. Of course, both games that I could get working to test with here aren't exactly latency intensive, but they do echo results that I've done with older versions of DLSS, and I think give a bit of an insight into how the different technologies operate. It's clear that DLSS is a fast process. Having a lower resolution frame upscaled in the same or less time than a higher resolution image well, shows that the upscaling process isn't locked in by how much upscaling it has to do. FSR, by comparison, seems to be a more intensive task, as in both titles, the latency went up when using the higher performance mode. Still, seeing FSR quality offer such a low result in Hitman, even on NVIDIA hardware, is incredibly promising considering how open their solution is, at least by comparison. Intel's XCSS didn't fare quite as well. Although, as I mentioned, it does specify that it is for Intel GPUs, but does have a, a fallback option for AMD and Nvidia cards, so the results here might not be the absolute best performance it can offer. But also considering how many people have Intel Arc cards, or I suppose how few people, that might very well be the experience that you can expect if say you have an AMD card and you're trying to use a game that only has either DLSS or XCSS, obviously you're only gonna be able to use the latter. And as a final note, if you want to be able to test stuff like this yourself and don't happen to have Nvidia's LDAT tool, I'm building a fully open source latency testing tool to complement my existing open source response time tool. It is still a little while off yet, but if that is something that you're interested in, head over to osrct.com and drop your email in the mailing list box at the bottom of the page. I don't sure share your email with anyone, and you will only hear from me when I actually have something to share with you rather than some fairly pointless weekly updates or anything like that. So that's a look at some of the upscaling techs and the latency that they actually end up removing rather than add. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this one, feel free to let me know if you want to see other games tested in the comments. I can't guarantee that I can get them working or even access to them, but uh, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do for a follow-up in future. Also, of course, if you want to stay up to date on things like the open source latency testing tool or the response time tool, monitor reviews, and a whole lot of other tech reviews, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon.
There's also plenty of videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second. If you want to support me rambling on on YouTube, then you can check that out through YouTube, through Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of the designs I made myself. And there's also some affiliate links to uh, various places like Overwatch UK. I might leave an affiliate link to the uh, M32Q monitor because I do actually quite like it. Uh, and those will all be in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed us. We'll see you on the next video.